Welcome everyone to another Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be making this bowling animation. So I'm going to be using a few different things online uh, to create this. I'm gonna be using this Marble009 on uh, cc0textures.com. Um, so if you wanna download this, um, I just used the 2K JPEG. And then I also pulled up a bowling ball reference image just to see how big the holes are and kind of where they're placed. And then I'm also going to be using this uh, small hanger 02 HDRI on HDRI Haven. So if you want to go ahead and download this, there will be links in the video description to all of these resources. And then for the wood bowling alley, I'm going to be using this Parquet Flooring 07, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, and this is from cgbookcase.com. And so I just downloaded the 4K version. I downloaded the base color, normal and roughness. We don't need to use the height, so you don't need to download that. And then also on Pixabay, I grabbed this uh, bowling pin image just so that we can use this as a reference image when we're modeling. So that's an option if you wanna use that. And then at the end of the tutorial, we're gonna be doing some video editing and we're actually gonna add in the sound effects and music that I used. So if you wanna use the same uh, kind of beat and sound effect of the bowling ball smashing the pins, um, you can download uh, this sound here. This sound effect is on freesound.org and it has a Creative Commons Zero license. So if you want to go down into the video description and download that. And then if you want to, I also have this uh, Wiki Beats. This is also Creative Commons Zero. And this is just a cool little background beat to add into the final animation if you want to do that. All right, and I've just opened up a new scene in Blender. I'm going to be using Blender version 2.90.1, which is the uh, newest stable version. Um, I'm going to turn on my screencast keys. I have an add-on where I can use screencast keys so you can see what buttons I'm pressing down here. I'm also going to be doing this in Cycles Render. So you could definitely do this in Eevee if you want. Uh, it'll work too, but I like Cycles better because it's more realistic. Also, I'm turning on motion blur right here because when we render out the final animation, uh, motion blur just makes it look a lot better. Um, I actually like motion blur so much that I turn it on default because it just makes everything look a lot more realistic. And then also I do video editing in Blender. So I have uh, on the playback here, I have this AV sync turned on and I have this setting on because it helps with the playback with video editing. But in this tutorial, I want to turn this off because we're going to be doing physics in Blender. And so if we have this on, it could mess up the physics. So I'm just going to turn it on to no sync. So now I'm going to actually delete everything. So I'm just going to press A and then click on X and delete. Um, now let's add in that reference photo. So on the numpad, I'm going to press one to jump to front view. And now from my file browser, I'm just going to drag and drop in the bowling pin reference photo that we added. Um, so I'll go back to one for front view. And if we press uh, G, we can grab it and move it around. If we press R, we can rotate it. And if we press S, we can scale the reference image. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit and I'll move it down just so that it's sitting on the floor just like that. Now I'll press Shift A and I'm going to add a circle. So I'm going to make the circle uh, vertices right here. You can click on this little add circle properties. I'm going to just set this to like eight because we don't really need that many vertices. So I'll just make it set to eight or something like that. And then I'll just scale this down until it's the correct size. Um, let's tab into edit mode now. And you can see that we have all these selected. So I'll press E to extrude it up and I'm going to click with my middle mouse wheel to put it on the Z axis. So I'll just bring it up a little bit and then just press S and scale it up a little bit. And then I'll press E and extrude it up and then click again with my middle mouse wheel to constrain it onto the Z axis. And then I'll press S and scale it up even more. So basically just follow along, pressing E and S and just make uh, the shape of your bowling pin. Now this, I want it to be probably a little bit smaller so I can I can hold down alt and then click and that'll select uh, this loop and then I'll just scale that down and then I can alt and click on this loop here again and then E and extrude it up and just keep on uh, modeling this until we're at the very end. One more time, extrude it up and scale it down. Let me bring it down a little bit. Now you can see that there's an opening here so we can just press F to fill that face. Uh, F will fill the face of vertices. And now I'm gonna tab back into object mode. Now it's really blocky right now, so we're gonna add a subsurf. So let's go over here to the modifiers. I'm gonna click on add modifier and add a subdivision surface. You could also press control one or control two to add that, that's a shortcut key. 
Now I want to shade this smooth. So I use right click select. So what I can do is press W and click on shade smooth. Uh, you can also just go up here and click on shade smooth under this object setting. And now you can see because we've added that subsurface, it's smoothed out the edges. And now it's actually not the right size. So it's not really quite aligned with our reference image. So let's tab back into edit mode and I'm going to alt and click on this loop of vertices. And then I'll press S and scale it up until uh, it's the correct size. And I can do that again here. So scale this up. You could also um, go into wireframe by pressing Z and moving your mouse over. And then you can press B and box select an area. So I think I want to scale this out a little bit so I can just box like that and then scale it up with S. Now the bottom here, it also has an opening. So I'm going to alt and click on this loop and then F to fill that. Um, and you can see here that it's really rounded and that's because the subsurface uh, rounds all the edges. So we need to add a loop cut to define where we want that to curve. So I'll press control R control R is the shortcut key to add a loop cut and I can just click and then drag down and then click again. And now it's sharpened up that edge uh, really nice. So let's just keep going along and uh, editing this. So I can see that there's a part here, which I need to scale up a bit. And also like right here, I need to scale this up a bit and that looks pretty good. I like how that is now. Um, one last thing that we need to do for modeling is uh, you can see if I just, uh, if I just press H to hide the model, you can see that there's these uh, red rings around the bowling pin. So I'm going to press alt H to unhide the object again. So what we want to do is we want to add loop cuts where um, those rings are. So I can actually alt and click on this loop and just uh, double tap G and that'll uh, do the edge slide and I'll just edge slide it down, maybe scale it down a little bit to where that top red is. And then I'll press control R at another loop cut and just bring it uh, up a bit and then S to scale it down. Then I can press control R again and click and add another loop cut just right there. And then this last loop cut, I want to bring it down a little bit. So I'll alt and click on the loop and then double tap G to activate the edge slide and just bring it down a little bit just like that. And then we can tap back into object mode. Okay. So we don't need the reference photo anymore. So I'm going to just uh, click on it right here to select it and then press X and delete it. Now is a pretty good time to save our project. So you can go file and click on save as, and I'm just going to call it a uh, bowling dot blend. Just save that in a folder on your computer. It looks like the normals probably need to be recalculated. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, select everything with a, and then press shift N. So shift N is the shortcut key to recalculating the normals. A bird just like bumped into the window or something. <laughs> okay. That was weird. So I'll tab back into object mode now. Um, yeah, and you can see now the normals are recalculated because before they looked like this and you can see the shading just looks a little bit weird. So yeah, shift N to recalculate the normals. Now I want to add some materials. So I'm going to click over on this material tab right here and I can just click on new and I can just call this like white. And then let's add another material. So now we have the white material. Um, if you want to preview this, you can press Z and move your mouse down to go into the material preview. And you can see, now you can see it's this nice uh, white material. You can turn it all the way up to white if you want. And then also I want to uh, turn the roughness down a little bit. I'm going to change this to maybe like 0.25, something like that, maybe a little bit more up. Um, but you can totally change this later, but I just want to make it look like it's kind of a shiny plastic or a shiny paint. Um, and then let's add the red material and I want this red material to be pretty much exactly the same, but I want it to be red instead. So I can click on this plus to add a new material within this object. And then I want to select the white material, but now I want to duplicate it so I can change it and make it red. So I'm going to click on this, uh, little kind of file paper thing. And that way now it's duplicated the material. So now I can just change this to like red, just call it red. And now it's the same material, but I can now change it. So I want to make this a nice bright red. And now I need to tell Blender where I want the red material to be, because right now the red material is within the object, but there's no places that it's assigned on the object. So to tell it where I want to put it, I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to click on three, not on the number pad, but just the regular three on your number pad. Uh, or you can also click on this and that'll go to face select. So now I can select different faces. So what I'm going to do is hold down alt and click on this right here and that'll select the entire loop. 
and then I can hold down shift and alt and click again on this one and that'll select the second loop. Then I can just click on the red material and then click on assign. So I'm telling it that's where the red material is gonna be. So now the red material is on there pretty nicely. And if you wanted to edit the loop cuts at all, like move them up or down, you could definitely do that. So I'm gonna click on one and that'll go back to vertices select, or you can also click on here to go to the uh, vertices select. And then you can alt click on a loop and then double tap G again to do that edge slide and you can make it bigger or smaller. So if you want um, the red rings to be smaller, you can just move them closer together. Okay, so I like how that looks. I'm gonna go file and save this again. Now let's model the bowling ball. So with this object selected, I'm gonna press H and that'll hide it. You can see right here it's grayed out and the eye icon is closed. So that'll just hide it. So it's still there, but it's hidden so we can't see it. Now I'm gonna press Shift C just to make sure the 3D cursor is in the center of our scene. And then I'll press Shift A and I'm gonna click on UV sphere. Now I wanna add one layer of subsurface because I do want it to have more detail. So I can click on uh, control one. So control one is the shortcut key to add uh, one level of subdivisions. You can also just click on the modifiers, add modifier and add a subsurf and then change the values to one. So now we want to apply this modifier because we wanna actually turn it into vertices because right now if I tab into edit mode, you can see that um, the subsurf isn't applied yet, so you, we're still working with less vertices. So to apply this, in the old Blender version, there was um, an apply button, but for some reason they decided to take it away. So what you do to apply this is to just move your mouse over the um, modifier that you want to apply, and then click on Control A. So Control A, now it's applied, and now if I tab into edit mode, you can see there's a lot more vertices to work with. So if I pull up my um, reference, I just got this reference online, the bottom hole is a lot bigger and then the two smaller holes, I believe you put your thumb in the bigger hole and then your two other fingers in the other hole. I have done a little bit of bowling, so, but it's been a while. I haven't done bowling in a while. So I think you put your other two fingers in here and then your thumb in here and that's why this is bigger so your thumb can fit in it. Um, so let's actually do that in modeling so it'll be more accurate. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'll click over here on the face select or just press three. And now I'm um, looking at my reference photo. I'm going to kind of try to just pick a good spot. I think just like here maybe. So I'm just going to shift and select those four faces. And then I want to scale them up a bit. So I'll press S, just scale it up just like that, a little bit bigger. And then I want to select um, the other one. So I think I'll select these. And that's what I'm going to use for the other smaller holes. And then I need to shift and select these again. So now I have these two smaller parts and these two bigger parts. Now I want to make these into a circle. And there's actually a really great Blender add-on which can do that for you. Um, so if you go edit and go to preferences, then over here on the add-ons, you can search right here and start typing in loop tools. So you can turn this on. I leave it on. So I just turn it on and click on save preferences. So it's always there so I can use it whenever I want. Let's just close this now. And then I'm going to press N to open up the side panel. And if I go over here to edit, you can see here is the loop tools add on. So I'll just click on this and I'm going to now click on a circle. And now what it's done is it's taken the selection and it's turned it into circles. So I can just press N to close this now. And now I want to extrude these into the bowling ball. So I'll press E and extrude that back. And now it's just gonna go into the bowling ball. And now I'll tab back into object mode. Now, right now this is really blocky. So I wanna smooth this out. So to smooth it out, I can add another subdivision surface. And then I wanna turn the levels up to two. So render and viewport up to two. And you can see now it's a lot smoother, but there's still those little boxy things. Um, so what we need to do is to use smooth shading. So again, I use the right click select. So if I press W, I can get up this panel and I'm gonna click on shade smooth. You can also just go up here and click on object and shade smooth. Okay, so that looks a lot better, but you can see that the bowling ball is a lot sharper, like the edges of the holes are a lot sharper. So I can actually fix this. So to fix this, I'm gonna tab into edit mode. Um, I'll click on this or click on one to go to the vertices select and I'm just going to hold down Alt and click on this loop. And then you can see it doesn't select all of it. So I need to hold down Shift and Alt and keep on selecting 
uh, this whole loop. And then this one vertice down here, I just click on shift to select it. Um, and then hold down alt again and shift and select all these. You could also just hold down shift and manually click on each one if that's easier for you. Uh, so just click on all these and select all of them. And now that all the edges are selected, I'm going to add a bevel. Um, and to do that, I'm going to press control B. So kind of move your mouse kind of out here, press control B. And now if you pull your mouse away, it's going to pull out a bevel. And then I can use the scroll wheel and scroll up a couple of times to add um, more vertices to make that sharper. And now just pull it out to something that looks good. Maybe just right here and then click just to actually place that. So now you can see that looks a lot more like our reference photos. And it kind of looks like a guy going, Oh, like if that's a face, here's his eyes and here's his mouth. <laughs> okay. So now the bowling ball is finished. I'm just going to go file and save this again. Now I'll press H to hide this object again, because I want to um, hide it. Um, and let's set up the actual scene now. So we're going to be modeling the bowling alley now. So I'll press shift a, and I'm going to add a plane. And this is going to be the actual like wooden bowling alley. And I want to scale it up pretty big, like definitely a bit bigger. And then I'll tab into edit mode. Just make sure the whole thing's selected and I'll press X. I mean S and then X and just bring it out a bit so that um, it's longer this way. Cause we're going to have the bowling alley go down that way. And then also I want to scale it out so that it's um, thicker. Okay. So now I'll tab back into object mode. Now I want to model um, those side grooves, which are on both sides of the bowling alley. Um, because yeah, looking at reference photos, I've seen that there's kind of those grooves. So if you don't aim right, then the bowling pin, uh, the bowling ball will fall into the grooves and you're not going to hit any of the pins. So to model that, um, I'm going to tab into edit mode and then I'm going to uh, hold down alt and just click on this loop right here. So it's going to select these two and then I'll press shift D and shift D is the shortcut key for duplicating. And then I'll click on Y and just move it out a little bit. Okay. And then I want to turn this into a separate object. So the shortcut key to separate a mesh into its own object is P. So if I press P, you can see it says separate and you have some options here. I want to separate everything that's selected into its own object. So I'll click on this. And now if I tab into object mode, uh, select this object and tab into edit mode, you can see now it's its own object. So I'll just model um, that kind of lip thing. So I'll press three to go to uh, side view and it's kind of hard to see. So I'll just kind of move down here. So I'm kind of at a side view and then I'll press E and click down with my middle mouse and just kind of pull this out a little bit and then press E and Z and just move that down. Okay. And then I want to add the lip down here. So I'll uh, click on this vertice, shift and click on the other vertice, extrude it out by pressing E and then click with my middle mouse wheel to pull it out this way. And then I want to make it go down. So I'll press G to grab it Z and pull it down a bit. You could also go into side view, oh, three for side view and just kind of see how far that is. And then I'll extrude it out, move it over, kind of make it a little bit big. It seems like they were kind of big to fit the whole bowling ball. And then I'll extrude this back up over here and then extrude it sideways again. And then I'll just extrude it down one more time. So we kind of have this kind of M shape. Okay, there we go. I like how that looks. Now you can see um, the shading looks a bit weird and um, that's because we need to recalculate the normals again. So I'll tab into edit mode and press a to select everything. Just double tap a and then press shift N. So shift N recalculates the normals. Okay, we can tab back into object mode and then I'm going to press G click with my middle mouse wheel and kind of align it right up to the bowling alley. And then uh, there's a little bit of weird glitches right here. That's because this is intersecting with this in there at the exact same point. So I want to bump up the um, lip kind of thing a little bit. So I'll press G and Z and just move it up a tiny bit just so that there's a kind of little, just a little uh, lip there. And so they're not intersecting exactly at the same point. Now this kind of trench thing is really sharp right now. I want to smooth it out. So again, I'm going to press control two to add the subdivision surface. Um, and then I want to add some loot cuts to define uh, where it's sharp and where it's not. So I'll tab into edit mode and press control R click and drag over control R click and drag over to sharpen up those edges. And then actually I think that the uh, trench is a little bit too low. So I'm going to press three for side view. 
uh, Z and move over to go into wireframe and then I'll box select this and press G move it up a little bit because I don't want it really to be that uh, far down and then I want to sharpen this up because right now it's really round so I'll press control R add a loop cut here a loop cut here another loop cut here and here and then right here I want to add a loop cut maybe another loop cut up here just like that and then we'll shade that smooth Okay, so I want to add that on the other side as well. And something that I see right now is that actually I think the bowling alley needs to be wider. So I'll just press S and scale the whole thing out a bit because I want it to be um, a bit wider. Then I can click on this uh, lip side thing, pull it out. I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> a trench? I don't know. Okay, there we go. That looks That's looking a lot better. So now I want this to be on the other side as well. So to do this, I can just click on add modifier and add a mirror. And then um, on the mirror, I don't want the Y to be turned on. I, I actually want the Y to be turned on and I want the X to be turned off. So now you can see it's not actually aligned in the right place. So um, I can use this mirror object and click on this and then click on uh, the center alley right there and now it's bumped it over and then we kind of need a drop off for uh, the bowling alley to kind of fall down into the like area where the machine you know picks up the pins and stuff so I'm gonna select this and then shift select this and I can tab into edit mode and now I can do multi object editing so this is a somewhat newer feature in blender but it's really great um, so I can just uh, go into wireframe and B and box select the entire vertices that are all over here and I want to um, bring them kind of down so they kind of slope down very rapidly. So I'll press E and extrude that out, R to rotate it, and then G to grab it and kind of move it down, and then E again and just pull it like straight down. I want it to be pretty sharp. Now you can see that it's kind of acting weird right here. That's because we need to add a loop cut. So I'll press Control R, click and drag over like that. And then you can see this is intersecting a little bit. Um, so what I'll do is just go into uh, just go into edit mode on the uh, center the alley and I'll just box select everything I'll just go into edit mode actually and box select this entire area and then just kind of move it back a little bit and there we go and then it is a bit sharp here so to smooth it out I'll just alt click on this loop press control B to add a bevel and bring that up a little bit you can use your scroll wheel to change uh, how smooth the bevel is and then just go back into object mode and now it's a lot smoother but you're not really going to see this back area because we're going to have the camera over here so it doesn't matter too much how this looks back here now there is another thing that i want to add i want to kind of add like a backdrop um usually when i've looked at reference photos you're usually kind of just like a dark kind of area it just kind of goes dark behind uh the bowling alley so what i'm going to do is press shift a just add a cube and i'll scale it up and scale it out so it's kind of wider kind of to fit the bowling alley more and I think I'll scale it up a little bit more just like that okay and I'll move it kind of back so that it's kind of in the ending of the bowling alley and then I'll tab into edit mode um, and go to the face select and just select this face and then I'll press X and delete uh, faces so it's just that face that's being deleted so now we kind of have like a little cave sort of thing um, back there and I'll just bring this up a little bit and that way we can just set this to a dark material and it'll just kind of be a nice backdrop for our scene. Okay, so let's press uh, Alt H to unhide the objects and you can see they're actually really small, but that's okay. Um, I think that the physics actually works better if things are a bit bigger. They just seem to work better in Blender. So I'll just scale this up to a size that I want. Um, that's probably good, maybe a little bit smaller and then just move the bowling pin over a little bit and just move it down so that it's just barely above uh, the alley. And then I'll scale the bowling ball up a little bit. You could definitely look at reference photos to see how big it needs to be. Um, I think that probably, um, probably about that size is good between the two. Let's go file and save again. I always like to save a lot so that if Blender crashes, we don't lose anything because that's really frustrating. Okay, now I'm going to start doing the materials. So before we do materials, actually, I want to just add some lighting because lighting really helps to really be able to see how it's actually looking. So I'm going to go over to the world and then I'm going to add in that HDRI that we added. So this color here, I can just click on this yellow dot 
and then just click on E and E is going to select an environment texture. You can also just go find it in here. Uh, but I like to work pretty fast. So I just click E um, that adds the environment texture. And then I can click on open right here and then just locate to where you've downloaded the HDRI. Uh, of course, if you wanna use a different HDRI or light it manually, you can totally do that, but I like adding in this HDRI. I think the lighting just looks really nice. So just double click on that. And now if we go into rendered mode, you can see uh, it's looking really nice. Um, now, something that I wanna do to make it more realistic is over here on this little kind of file icon. I don't really know what this is actually, but it's the uh, render properties or the render settings. Down here on color management, um, just make sure this is set to filmic. It should be set to filmic on default. Um, I, as I said earlier, do video editing in Blender. So this actually messes up the video editing colors. So I have it set to standard. And then the look here, I'm gonna change this to high contrast. So that the colors are kind of bumped out. It just makes it look a little bit nicer. And then let's add a camera. So I'm just gonna kind of move to the place that I want the camera to generally be. I think I want the camera to be kind of around here. I'll press shift A, just add a camera down here, and then I can press control alt number pad zero, and that's gonna bring the camera to where we are. Okay, and then if I wanna, if I wanna move the camera, I can press G to move around. Um, and if I wanna move the camera back and forth, I can press G and then double tap Z, and now I can move the camera like back and forth, and then R to rotate, and we don't really need to scale it. It's not gonna really change anything. Um, so just Put it out of position that you like, just something like that is decent. And now uh, let's do the materials. So we've already done the bowling pin material. Um, let's do the uh, floor, the bowling alley. Um, so first we need to UV unwrap this so that we can tell the texture where it needs to be. So I'm gonna press seven to go to top view and then I'll tab into edit mode and press A to select everything. And then uh, I can press U and that'll bring up the UV mapping uh, settings. And I can click on unwrap project from view. And what project from view is gonna do is it's gonna take the UV editing and just drop it straight on from where we're looking. And since we're looking down, it'll work really well. It's just gonna drop the texture right on it. So I'll just click on that. And then I'll go back into object mode. Um, let's go over to the shading tab now so that we can actually um, edit the material. So I'm gonna click new. I can just call it wood or something like that. Now you definitely could add in each texture manually um, if you want to, but there is a really easy way to add materials. First, you're gonna need to enable the Node Wrangler add-on. If you don't have that enabled, it's really easy. You just go edit preferences and then on the add-ons here, start typing in node and you'll see that there's this Node Wrangler add-on. Um, this is a really great add-on. I really like using it. Um, so I'm going to close this now. And now that the Node Wrangler is enabled, I can select the principled BSDF, which is the uh, shader that we're using. And I'm going to press Control Shift T. And that's going to bring up the file browser. So now if we go out and just find uh, the textures, here's the parquet flooring, if that's what it's called. Um, so here's all the maps, the color, normal, and roughness. I'm going to press A to select all of them. And then it says principled texture setup. So if I click on that, you can see it's already done all the work for us. So if you're um, if you're new to Blender and you don't really know how to set this up, I do think it's a valuable skill to know how to set up materials yourself. Um, but if you already know how to use this like me, like I've set up materials many, many times, then it's really easy just to quickly use this principal texture setup and it'll use, it'll just find the different, uh, it uses the names in the textures and it's able to just set this up automatically. And now you can see it actually looks pretty good, um, but I want to change the scale of it now. So I'm going to go over to UV editing. And now if I zoom out here, this is the uh, UV editing. You can see that here is our object. Um, here's all the like vertices and stuff. So if I go, uh, if I press Z and move my mouse down, I can go into the material preview and I can see how big the wood is. And then I can just press S and scale this bigger or smaller just to make it the scale that I want. So if I go into the camera view, I can scale it down a bit more. I don't think I really want it to be that big, something like that. I don't want it to be so small that you can start to see the pixels. 
um, but that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go back into the shading tab now, and then there's a few things that I want to do. Um, because if you think about a bowling alley um, and look at reference photos, it's very smooth and shiny. So this normal map here, this is going to tell it where like the bumps and uh, grooves are in the wood. I want to make this only like maybe a 0.2 because I do want there to be a little bit of grooves, but it's uh, usually pretty polished and smooth. If we go into rendered mode now, you can see that um, it, there's a lot less bumpiness. It's pretty smooth. Also in the camera view, if I press control B and then drag to select the entire camera, it's only going to render what's in the camera. And that way render speeds is going to be faster. Now there's one more thing that I want to do, and that is to make it more shiny because yeah, bowling alleys are pretty shiny, so I want to make it extra shiny. So I do want to use this roughness, but I'm going to make it more shiny. And to do that, I'll press Shift-A, and I'm going to click on Search and type in Color Ramp. So I'll drop this Color Ramp in right here. And uh, using the Node Wrangler feature, I can press uh, Control and Shift and click on this Color Ramp. Uh, the Node Wrangler has many different features and uses. So if you press Control, Shift, and click on a node, you can preview what that node is. So what's happening is where the texture is black, it's going to be more shiny. And where the texture is white, it's going to be less shiny. So I can click on this little um, triangle thing and pull this over and that's going to make more of the material more shiny. So now if I control shift and click back on the principle, you can see that now it's getting a lot more shiny. You can actually start to see the reflectant, uh, the reflecting pins and ball. So if I drag this down more, you can see like if I drag it way down, it's like really shiny. But if I drag it up, it's only a little bit shiny. So I want it to be a lot more shiny uh, like a bowling alley is. Now let's um, set up this uh, backdrop. So I'm gonna click on new and you can name it if you want. What I'm gonna do is just leave all the settings that on the default, but I'm gonna turn it all the way to black. And now it's uh, gonna make that black background and it looks really nice. I think that looks really nice. Just kind of brings the scene together and really uh, you can kind of focus on these objects cause they're brighter, um, but you can still see there's those nice reflections there. Now let's set up the little trenches over here. So I'm going to select this, click on new, and it looks from the reference photos that I've seen, it looks like they're metal. So I'm going to turn this metallic value all the way up so it's nice and shiny. I'm going to turn this all the way to white. You can turn it down to gray if you want though. And then the roughness of the uh, metal, just change it to what looks good. I think I like it actually looking a little bit brighter. Now let's set up the uh, bowling ball material. So I'm going to click on new here and I can just call it like bowling ball, bowling ball. You don't have to name it if you don't want to. And now let's do that principled texture setup again. So I'm going to just click on this to select it and press control shift T. And now I'll go out and I'll find that marble texture that I'm using. And I want to use the color. And then I don't want to use the displacement. I just want to use the normal roughness and color. So I can click on the color and then hold down control and click on the normal and roughness. And then click on principled texture setup. And it set it up just like the other one. Now, as far as UV unwrapping goes, um, there's a much easier way to UV unwrap a sphere kind of like this. Um, if I control shift and click on the base color here, you can see that um, right here, it's a little bit stretched and there's also some seams and um, in the holes, it's kind of being stretched too. So for random textures, I like to use a cool texturing method. Um, you've probably seen it in other tutorials if you follow some of my tutorials. Um, what I'm going to do is instead of using UV, which is using the um, UV unwrap that we do, I'm going to click on object and just drag this object into the vector. So now it's using the um, object texture coordinate. And you can see it looks a little bit better, but there's kind of some weird stretching right here. What I'm going to do is change this flat to box and then change the blend value to something maybe like 0.2 or something around there. And then I'm going to do this for all three textures. So I'll change flat to box, blend 0.2, and then here, flat to box, blend 0.2. And these all need to be the same values because the textures all need to match up. And I believe what this is doing is it's kind of taking a box, putting the box around uh, the object, and then it's kind of having the texture on each side of the box, and it's pushing it all together onto the mesh. Um, and yeah, it looks really great. Um, if you control shift and click on the base color, you can see that everywhere it just looks pretty nice. Um, I do think that it's a little too small right now. So what I can do is change this scale, and that'll actually change the scale of all the textures. Um, so what I can do is click on this, drag down, and then 
move back and forth and that'll change the size of it. Um, you can see here, like right over there on the uh, right side, you can see where that um, blending is. We changed the blend value to 0.2. That's blending in between the texture. And that's why this works really well for random textures. So anyways, just um, make it a scale that you want. You can just drag down and then scale it to a scale that you like. I like probably something like that. And then also you can edit the color of the texture if you want to. So I don't really like this dark green um, texture. So what I'm gonna do is press Shift A and I can search for RGB curves. Just click on the RGB curves and then I'm gonna drop it right in here in between the connection of the base color and the base color on the principal. Um, now if I control shift and click on the RGB curves, we can now preview it. So this C here, that's gonna be how light or dark it is. I wanna actually make it lighter. So I'm gonna drag up a point here to make it a little bit lighter. And then I wanna make it more blue cause I think blue just looks cool. So I can just drag this up and now it's gonna add more blue cause the B stands for blue. Uh, G stands for green and R stands for red. Now, right now it's a little bit purple and I don't really want that. So I'm gonna drag this down. So drag the red down and I'll take away the red and make it more blue. So you can make whatever uh, colors you want. Um, I am going to scale this a little bit uh, smaller though. So yeah, you can make it whatever colors you want. I'm going to make that blue color and then I'll control shift and click back on the principal and we can see what it looks like. And I think that looks pretty nice. Let's go back to layout now and you can see now we have all the textures and materials set up. So now we can start doing what I think is probably the funnest part, which is the uh, physics. So I'm going to actually press G, move this bowling ball over, click, and then G, press Z and move it up um, because I want to make the bowling ball kind of fall down to get momentum. And then I want to add a ramp here so that when I add physics, it's going to hit the ramp and go right towards the bowling pins. Uh, that's just the easiest way that I've found to get this to work. So I'll press shift A. I'm going to add a cube and let me just scale the cube up. Let's just move it over and then move it up a little bit. So it's just kind of right here. Let's tab into edit mode on the cube. I'll press uh, one to go to vertices select and just click on these two vertices and G and pull it out or in, pull it in like that. And now we have this kind of ramp. Um, and if you want to just kind of scale it down to make it a little bit sharper, scale it up um, so that it's at more of an angle, you can definitely do that and scale it up or something just like that. Now let's start adding the physics to all of our objects. So we need to add physics to the bowling ball. So I'm gonna click on the physics panel right here. It's like the little earth, I think with a moon going around it. Um, and we're gonna add rigid body. So now if we, let's just pull up the timeline here. I use the space bar to play. You can also click on this play button. So let's just play this and you can see it starts to fall. Now it falls through the objects because we need to tell the other objects that they have physics as well. Um, but you can see here, the bowling ball is falling really slowly. And I found that just generally Blender is pretty, the uh, physics animation is pretty slow. And one reason that might be is because of how big all the objects are. But I have found that it works better if the objects are scaled up really big. So what I can do instead to make the simulation faster is I can click on uh, this right here. This is the scene properties. And let me just scroll down. Here it is, so click on rigid body world. And then on the speed here, I can just change this up. So let me change it to like two, play that. That's gonna be double the speed. Um, and just get it to a speed that you want, maybe five. I think I like that, that looks pretty good. Cause you gotta think it's a bowling ball. Maybe four looks better. Um, and this, I think this will also depend on how uh, big your objects are. So just kinda eyeball it and make a speed that you think looks good. I think I'll just use five for now, but you can definitely change this or make it slower if you want. Uh, later on. Actually, I think I'll make it 4.5. Let's go back over to the physics tab now, and I'm going to need to add physics to most of the other objects. So I'll click on this. I also want to add a rigid body, but now if we play this, they're both going to fall. Um, and what we want to do is we want to change the type here to passive. So active, like what the bowling ball has, that's going to tell it um, that it's going to fall and interact with the objects. Um, what this is going to do if you change it to passive is it's going to tell it not to move so it's going to still have physics but it's not going to move and so what happens is the bowling ball will bounce off of it and now i'm sure you can imagine what we're going to do next we're going to click on the floor and do the same thing so we're going to add rigid body and change it to passive and that way it won't fall and now the bowling ball rolls on the ground 
Now it looks like I can see here that the bowling ball kind of rolls a little bit slowly. I think it's usually is going to roll faster in real life. So to make it go faster, I can press G and Z and pull it up. And that way when it falls, it's going to have more momentum. It's going to move a lot faster. So that's something you can definitely play around with. Also, if for some reason the bowling ball is like going on a weird angle, if it's rotating, like going to the left or to the right, you can actually like rotate this and that way it's going to kind of angle it more. So if you want to aim it, you can, um, my bowling ball works pretty well. It goes pretty straight, but you can definitely just rotate this around, uh, like this. So R and Z and just rotate it. And that way you can angle where you want it to go. Now I do want to add physics to this side thing right here, the little trenches. So I'm going to click on a rigid body as well, make it passive. And then also the bowling ball, the bowling ball is pretty heavy. So I like to make it heavier than the other objects, but if I just like make it four, I found that that can work better, uh, but you can definitely play around with this. Um, you can make it more or less, um, but I'm going to make it heavier so that the bowling ball is heavier and it's going to hit the objects with more force. Okay. Now we don't need to add physics to this cause this is just kind of a backdrop. So the last thing we need to add physics to is the bowling pin. So this I'm going to turn on rigid body. And I'm actually going to change the mass to like 0.1 and that way it's going to be a lot lighter. So when the bowling pin, uh, the bowling ball hits it, it's going to have a lot more force. So now if I play this, you can see, boom, it hit it. And, um, if you're, if you're finding that, uh, this is kind of like rotating weirdly or like glitching around, um, something that we should do, even if your object is not glitching, something that I found helps a lot is if you make the origin point in the center of the object, because right now the origin point is in the very bottom and that actually kind of messes with the physics and like the weight of it. So if I go object and then click on set origin, you can set the origin to geometry. And now it just should work better. Also, if you find that your pin just randomly like blows up or moves away or kind of acts really weird or does something like that, it might be because it's going through the ground. So just make sure it's just barely up so that when you play the animation, it just kind of drops very slightly. Something else you could play around with is the surface re uh, response. Um, I found that if you turn the friction down, it actually looks a bit better. Um, so I maybe change it to like 0.2 or something, but you could definitely play around with this. Um, I found that physics are kind of unpredictable in blender. Um, I've made this scene, like this is the fourth time now I've made this scene for the tutorial. And I found that like different times it can act differently. Like sometimes it kind of slides more, sometimes it kind of flies up in the air more. So definitely playing around with the speed, um, the mass of this, um, the friction, you could definitely play around with the friction and then also just playing around with like where it is and how big it is. These can all help to kind of just try to tweak it around and kind of get it to work right. Also, if you want to play around with this bounciness, you could, I haven't found this to make too much of a difference, but it does seem to make a little bit of a difference. So if you want to play around with that, uh, you can definitely do that. So I'm going to go file and save again, and then I'm going to add more bowling pins because one bowling pin is pretty boring. So let's add more. So I'm going to go to top view and then uh, this backdrop here, it's kind of in the way. So I'm going to click on it and just press H to hide it. So it's still there, but it's hidden. Now let's click on the bowling pin. And I'll press shift D shift D is the shortcut key to duplicate objects. So I'm going to duplicate it, just click and place it right here. And of course, uh, you can set up the bowling pins, however you want. You could just have like a, an army of bowling pins, or you could set it up how I'm going to do it kind of the classic way. Um, just set it up however you like, but I'm going to press shift D now and then move it over shift D again. And, um, yeah, I looked online just to kind of see how they set it up and this is how I found, I think this is the most classic way they set it up kind of like this, uh, one here, another one here, another one here. So I'm just pressing shift D to duplicate and then moving it over and clicking. Now it looks like these bowling pins are getting awfully close to the edge. So I'll B to box select all the bowling pins and then G and move it over a little bit. So there's a bit more room before it drops off. Uh, so now if I play this, there we go. Now it looks to me like I want the, I think I want the bowling ball to move a bit faster than this. I just want it to have a little bit more force. And also you can see right here that you, um, you can see the bowling ball kind of fall down. So I'm going to do two things. One thing I'm going to do, let me just go back to the starting of the animation is click on these, pull them back just slightly. Um, also the camera I could bring forward a bit because yeah, I kind of want it to be closer. So I'll press G and double tap Z, just kind of move it in a little bit. And then also I want to move the bowling ball a little bit up even more. So it has even more force. So now 
there we go. Now it's a little bit faster. It looks a little bit stronger. Um, and you can see now it seems to be not quite in the right place. It's kind of going sideways. Um, and this just, just sometimes happens. I found that, yeah, the physics aren't super predictable. So you're really going to have to kind of play around with things to get it to work right. But I'll just rotate this slightly. And now if I do that, now it's a lot more straight on. So yeah, just play around with it. Now I'll go into rendered mode, kind of when I can see all of the scene. Just go into rendered mode, just kind of see how that's looking. I need to press Alt H to unhide the backdrop. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I like how that is. Um, now I want to do a camera animation, just kind of have the camera slowly moving. So I'll click right here to select the camera. And I'm also going to turn on this auto keying so that when we move an object, it's automatically going to add a keyframe. Um, and I'll just move my camera to where I want, kind of zoom it out a little bit maybe. And then I'll play the animation, kind of let it go. And then when I see that the objects have kind of stopped, I'm going to press G and double tap Z, move it in a little bit, and then press R and Z and kind of rotate it over. And then G, kind of pull this camera over, just get it to a place where I like. And then I want to set the end frame to right here. So I can actually press uh, control end and that way it'll set the end frame to right where we have the end, or you could also just type in the end here. You can see that I'm at 118 frames, so I can just change the end frame to 118. So now if I play this, you can see the camera kind of moves, um, but the camera kind of speeds up and then slows down. To fix this, I'm going to make sure the camera is selected, and I'm going to make sure that the keyframes are selected as well. So I can press A to make sure they're selected, and then I'll press T, and that's going to open up this keyframe interpolation. Right now it's set to Bezier, so that's going to make it slowly speed up and then slowly slow down to go back to the ending keyframe. I want to change it to linear so that it's the same speed in between the keyframes. So if I change that and now play it, it's now just going to be smooth and straight. I'm just going to watch through this to kind of see if everything looks good. Everything looks good to me. I kind of like how this looks. So now I'm going to start doing some render settings. So let's go over here and I want to render this at 1920 by 1080. I'll just leave that as that. I'm going to set an output for where I want to save the images. So I'll click on this file right here and in the folder where I've saved my blender file, I'm going to add a new folder and just call it like rendered images. Just go inside that folder and click accept. So now we know the images are going to be rendered out to that folder. I'm going to use PNG. You could also use JPEG or some other image. So now let's uh, do some render settings to kind of speed up the render and just make it fast, as fast as possible. So um, I found that I usually can just render with like 50. I think 50 works fine. Um, so you just set the sampling to whatever looks good. I think 50 looks pretty good. And then down here on the light paths, let's just, let me just go back into rendered mode. Just kind of look at this. Um, I found that most of these can be turned pretty low. So I'm going to just change the total to two, diffuse and glossy to two. And then the, all the rest I can make zero. Um, and that way blender doesn't have as many light paths to render or simulate when it's rendering and it'll just make the render a lot faster. So I'm going to turn off all these reflective caustics and refractive caustics, filter gloss and direct and indirect light. If I just turn those all off, the render is going to be faster. So I'll hit, um, I'll go file and save again and then hit F12 or go render and render image. We'll just render that and see how fast it takes. Now I have a pretty powerful GPU, so it is going to probably render a lot faster. It might render faster than yours. Maybe you have a better GPU than me. Um, I am rendering on my GPU. You might just have to render on your CPU if you don't have a GPU. Um, but that took uh, only nine seconds to render. So I, I'm pretty happy with that. So now you can see that it's really grainy. So we're going to do some compositing to smooth that out. So I'm going to scroll over and go to the compositing tab and then um, I'll click on use nodes and you can see here's our compositing. So there's this render layers. That's actually the image that we rendered. And here's the composite. Now I want to uh, denoise the image. So what I can do is I can press shift a and just search for a denoise node and I'll just drop it in here. And then if I control shift and click on the denoise node, it's going to add that viewer and behind us is going to be the image. And you can see now it's all nice and smooth. Okay. That looks pretty good. Um, I do think that, um, the wood is so shiny that it actually looks a little bit wet. So real quick, I'm going to click back on the shading and select the wood material. And then let me just go into rendered mode just to see how that's looking. And I, th yeah, I think it's a little too shiny. So I'm going to pull it back a bit so that it's not quite that shiny. 
Okay, let's just render this again by pressing F12 and just see how that looks. Okay, that's a lot better. It's not quite as shiny now. Okay, so I like how that is. Um, we've already set the end frame and we've already set the output. So I can just go file, save this again. Um, and then also, yeah, it's really important. I think it's really important that you turn on uh, motion blur right here because that just makes it look so much more realistic. So let's go render and click on render animation or click on control F12. And that's gonna render out all the images uh, they're gonna, it's gonna render into that folder as pictures. When you render, this might happen. You can see that it's just jumped around and everything looks weird. And that's because uh, something went wrong with the simulation. You can see that when I press play, suddenly the uh, pins move away like crazy. This may happen to you or this may not, but what I found works is to just make sure you turn off the auto key just so that there's no keyframes added. And then I just click on the floor and I press G and Z and move it down just slightly. And now they seem to work fine. So what I do is I actually let the whole thing play out. You can see that there's this orange line here and that's um, the uh, this, that's the physics actually being kind of animated and put into the cache. So I just let this play out all the way just to make sure there's that orange line there. Then I press control F12 and it seems to work a lot better. If it's still acting really weird and isn't working for you, look up a tutorial on how to bake your physics into an animation, and that way it's gonna bake it to keyframes. Uh, it's not very hard to do, and then you'll be ensured that it's actually going to animate properly. But I found that this works uh, pretty good every time when you just make sure it's all orange down here. All right, and the render finished now. I actually stopped it after 100 frames because I didn't really need to render anything else. I just wanted to finish it up. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely render out the whole thing. So now I'm gonna go um, just open up a new file in Blender. So I'm just gonna go file and new. Just make sure you save this file and then go file, new, and I'm just gonna open up general. Now I'm gonna scroll over here and you can see there's this video editing tab that I've added. Um, if you don't see this, you can go plus and go to video editing and click on video editing. Or also, if you have the splash screen up, you can click on the video editing tab right there, or you can go file, new, video editing. So there's a few different ways to get to the video editor, and this isn't a video editing tutorial. I do have a complete tutorial series on how to do video editing. Uh, there'll be a card up on the screen if you wanna watch that tutorial series, but I'm just gonna show you some of the basic things so that you can follow along. So I'll press shift A right here, and I'm gonna add image sequence and I'll go to my rendered images and just press A to select everything and then click on add image strip. Now I have the space bar set up to press play, but you can also press this play button and you can see now it just goes by and smashes and then stops. Now you can see right at the very starting, I don't know if you can see it, if I zoom in here, they actually fall down on the ground because we needed them to be a tiny bit higher up so that they didn't have any glitches or anything. So I'm just gonna cut this out. Um, I'm just gonna select the handle right here, this white thing, and drag it over with G. So I'm pressing G, just moving it over, and then I can click on the entire thing, press G and move it back to frame one. So now if I just play this, you can see there it is and they smash and then stop right here. So um, let me just jump over here again to the sound effects that I'm using. Uh, I want to say thank you to these two people um, for making these sound effects. So if you want to download these, there'll be a link in the description to both of these, or you can, you don't have to use sound effects if you don't want to, or you can use whatever sound effects you want to use. So um, I have them over here on my file browser. First, I'm going to just drag in the wiki beats. Um, just drag that in like this. Now, because this animation is so short, I'm gonna actually have it go twice. So I'll just pull this out. I'm gonna click on this uh, animation, press Shift D and move it over, and then just let go when it's in the red, and that'll just bump it over. So I'm just gonna play it twice because I just want it to be a little bit longer. And then I'll click on this, uh, the wiki beats, and I'll just press Shift D again, and then just click when it's in the red, and that'll hop it over and bump it to the end there. So now if I play this, you can just watch it twice. Okay, now I'm gonna add in the uh, bowling sound effect and I'll just uh, press G, move it over and just kind of sync it up to the same spot. Also, I did make the volume down because I just kind of want to turn down the volume a little bit. And I feel like this is a little bit loud too, but of course you can play around with that, do whatever you want. So I'm just gonna uh, change the volume down. And if you don't see this uh, side panel here, you can press N to turn it on or turn it off. So now let's just uh, sync it up so that it looks pretty good. So right when I hear the first smash, maybe move it a little bit f uh, forward. And then I can just 
uh, duplicate this one more time for the second one. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate this, move it over, and then just sync it up again. And there we go, that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm gonna do some uh, render settings. So right here, let's just click on this file icon to set the output. And I'm just gonna save it in the same folder and I'm just gonna call it bowling animation. Just save that, so click accept. And then I change this to uh, FFmpeg video and then open the encoding and I like to use MPEG4 as the container. The video, I like to use H.264 as the video codec, and I just leave this at medium quality and good. And then the audio, I use AAC, but you could also use MP3. Um, if you're gonna upload this to YouTube, MP3 works better because AAC won't process with YouTube. YouTube can't process AAC. When I've tried to upload a video to YouTube with the AAC audio codec, um, it'll upload and then YouTube can't finish processing it. So I'd say use MP3 for uploading it to YouTube. I'm just gonna click on that, but sometimes I use AAC as well. And then let's just save this file just in case it crashes for some reason. So I'll go file and save, and I'll just save this as like editing, editing, and just save that Blender file. Okay, and now I can go render and render animation, and we'll just let this render out. And here it is, the final animation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I hope you learned something. If you wanna share your result with me, you can leave a link in the video description to your video and I'll definitely check it out. If you'd like to support me and this channel, I do have a Blender Market store where I'm selling 3D models and assets and tutorials. And I also have a Patreon set up where you can get the 3D models and assets that I sell. And you can also get all the tutorial files on my Patreon. So if you'd like to support me, the links will be in the video description to my Patreon and my different stores where I'm selling these 3D models and assets and tutorials. But even just following me on YouTube and watching my videos are a really great way to help out. So thank you for your support. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful and I hope you had fun and I'll see you in another video.